Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in with me today and welcome to FLCC Online Ministry. This is Neth Galido giving you a fresh message from God that will lift you up spiritually. Every nation around the world is in the lockdown mode due to the crisis we are facing right now, the COVID-19. The governments of the world set rules and precautionary measures to prevent the spread and transmission of the virus. The people were required to stay inside home and be safe. There is a story in the Bible where God gave instructions to his people to keep safe from the terrible plague, which is death. Today, I want to share with you 
what it means to be obedient, and why obedience matters. This message is entitled, Stay Home, Stay Safe. But first, let us worship the Lord together with Sis Berna and Lester. See you. 
Our scripture is found in the book of Exodus chapter 12 verses 12 to 13, 21 to 23, 29 to 30, and 41 to 42. Let's all read together. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Verses 21 and 22. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans, and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the, the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. Verses 29 and 30 at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who sat in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where someone was not dead. Verses 41 and 42 At the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It was a night of watching by the Lord to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So the same night, is a night of watching kept to the Lord by all the people of Israel throughout their generations. May the Lord bless the reading of His words. Atin pong balikan ang kasaysayan ng mga Israelites. It was started to Joseph, Joseph the Dreamer. Siya po ay pinagpala sa bayan ng Egypt kasama ng kanyang mga kapatid, ng kanyang ama at mga kamag-anakan. Lumipas po ang panahon, sila ay dumami. They increased in great number. At sa panahong yon ay meron ng bagong Pharaoh na nakaupo at wala ng pagkaalam o narinig 
patungkol kay Joseph. So this Pharaoh, naging threat sa kanya yung mga Israelites, kaya naisipan niya na pasakitan ang mga Hujo at inutusan niya ang bawat taskmaster na bigyan ng dobling trabaho na mas mahihirap ang mga Israelites. So, ganun nga nangyari sa kanila. Sila po ay pinahirapan ng todo. Talagang sila po ay namuhay bilang alipin at uh, minatrato po sila. They live as slaves sa uh, bayan ng Egypt. Hanggang sa hindi na nila makayanan, kaya wala po silang magawa kundi ang tumawag sa ating Panginoon. Exodus means going out or departure. The Israelites being oppressed by the Egyptians cried out to God. Pansinin po natin that the Israelites, they were chosen people of God and yet they went through dark times. We may not understand why but There are situations in our lives that the answer is only God. God allows problems and trials sa ating mga buhay. He allows pains and hurts para po tayo ay matutong tumawag at magtiwala sa Kanya. When you pray to God, when you cry to God, He will answer. At yan po yung kanyang promise sa Jeremiah 33.3. Ang sabi niya, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Take note, meron po mga great and mighty things ang Diyos na hindi pa natin nakikita. Na kapag tumawag ka sa Panginoon, He has this promise that He will show us the great and mighty things. At kapag ginawa niya yun, ay talagang manggigilalas ka sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos, sa Kanyang kayang gawin. Amen? Hearing the pleas and cries of the Israelites, God used Moses and his brother Aaron to deliver the Israelites from the bandage of slavery in Egypt. God sent and used different plagues in the land of Egypt to let his people go. But the hardened heart of Pharaoh wouldn't allow them to go till the most dreadful plague came in. Ito po yung pangsampung salot, the death of the firstborn. Ang problema Narito yung mga Israelites together with the Egyptians that when this plague strike them, ay mamamatay po sila. Now the question is, how can they be exempted from the plague of death? So the Israelites were given instructions to follow, to keep them safe and alive. They were instructed to take and kill a male lamb without blemish. Take some of the blood and apply it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. They shall roast it in fire and eat with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And everyone is instructed to stay inside the house. During these dark days, the crisis that we are facing right now, the coronavirus, we were instructed to stay inside our home. Instructions are not restrictions or punishment. These were given by the government for our own benefits. That's why obedience matters. It is very important for us to follow God's word. 
When we obey God's instructions, there are blessings. When we obey God's instructions, there are benefits. The first benefit is, when we obey God, there is protection. God promises to protect those people who obey His instructions, those who took heed on His words. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The destroyer or the angel of death will pass throughout the land and is stopped at most houses. But to those houses with blood on the doorpost, the angel of death will just pass over them. They were spared from the plague of death. Bakit po? What made the difference? Why were some spared? Were they better people? No. Was it because their priests had rituals and ceremonies? No, it wasn't their morality, nor the rituals, nor the ceremonies done by the priest. No good works, no morality, no rituals, no ceremonies could make the difference. Only one thing could make the difference, the blood of the Lamb. Were there death in every household? Meron po bang namatay sa bawat tahanan na kung saan dumaan yung destroyer or the angel of death? Actually, the answer is yes. Meron pong namatay sa bawat tahanan. When the angel of death passed over and didn't take the firstborn, it's because there had already been death there. Meron na pong namatay doon sa tahanang yon, And that is the death of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb is a sign for us. It is a public sign, a reminder to all na yung blood na yan, somebody died, somebody or someone died at the cross and shed his blood. Tandaan mo kung bakit ka buhay at kung bakit ka naligtas ay dahil meron nang namatay para sa iyo. And that sign is the blood. Kapag nakita yan ng destroyer or the angel of death, Hindi nakikita yung kabutihan mo, hindi nakikita yung estado mo, hindi nakikita yung kayamanan mo, hindi nakikita yung position mo, kung bakit kanya ililitas, kung bakit kanya i-spare. He will pass over you because of the blood that reminds us na meron nang namatay para sa iyo. And that is the Lamb of God, and His name is Jesus. Amen? In John 3.60 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, and that is Jesus, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish. Hindi po mapapahamak. Ano po yung promise? We'll have eternal life. It is God who saves by the blood of His Son, Jesus. In Hebrew 9.22, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. Friends, God can save you. He can save you right now. Just call on His name. Call on Jesus. Surrender your life to Him and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. 
the Bible says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Next, what will happen if you follow God's instructions? When we follow God's instructions, there is peace. Exodus chapter 12 verse 30, it says there, And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where someone was not dead. Makikita po natin dito that God is in full control and He made a distinction between the Israelites and the Egyptians. The Egyptians represent the unbelievers and the Israelites represent the believers. During that night, ano po yung pagkakaiba? In Goshen or in the houses of the Israelites, wala pong namatay na mga firstborn sa bawat pamilya ng mga Israelites. But, to those unbelievers o yung mga Egyptians who does not believe God, every family, lahat po ng kanilang mga firstborn ay namatay. So, when you obey God's instruction, you will have peace in your heart. Nagkakagulo na ang buong bayan ng Egypt. Everyone is crying. There is a great cry, a great wailing. Dahil lahat ng mga panganay na anak nila ay namatay that very night. Subalit sa mga Israelites, payapa po ang kanilang Pamilya, payapa po ang bawat tahanan nila because no one or no firstborn got died. Ganyan po ang nangyayari kapag marunong po tayong sumunod sa ating Panginoon. You will experience peace sa iyong buhay. God sent and used the ten plagues to address the gods of Egypt para makita po yung kaibahan ng tunay na Diyos at ang mga Diyos Josan. Sa Egypt, they have different gods. Ang dami po nilang gods. And God used these plagues to let them know that He is more powerful. He is the Almighty God, the true living God, and He is the great I Am. And their gods have no match to Him. Ano pong nangyari? Why He sent this different plagues? Bago pa gamitin yung mga plagues na ito, when God used and send Moses and Aaron para lapitan ang Pharaoh and let and tell Pharaoh let my people go God used the rod or the staff of Moses para ipakita yung kanyang kapangyarihan so yung rod na to it turned into snake pero hindi po nabahala yung mga Egyptians so, they called their magician and asked them to do the same. At nangyari po, yung kanilang mga tungkod, it turned into snake. What is the difference? So, nung ibaba po nila yung, or yung mga snakes, sila po ay naglaban, natalo po lahat yung mga snakes ng mga Egyptian ng snake ni Moses. So, true enough, pinakita ng Diyos dito that, is, that He is more powerful compared to them. Amen? Yung first plague, the plague of yung the water turned into blood. Ginaya din po yun ng mga Egyptians. Yung mga frogs, ginaya din po nila yun. And then the third plague, yung nuts, lies, o yung mga niknik. Yung plague na yun, ay hindi po nakuhang gayahin ng mga magicians, ng mga Egyptians. So, ano pong nangyari? As Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the ground, 
Ito po ay naging mga niknik na sinalanta ang buong Egypt. Lahat ng tao at ang kanilang mga livestock or lahat ng kanilang mga animals. Sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos, makikita po natin dito that even to the smallest creature ay pwede po niyang maipakita ang kanyang kapangyarihan. Even to the very smallest creature ay kaya niyang gamitin para makita nila that He is powerful enough at no match yung kanilang kapangyarihan. Because our God is the true living God. At wala pong makagagaya niyon. Amen? The God of Israel is the one true God. Even in the ninth plague, yung plague of not, the plague of darkness, kung maalala nyo, there was three days total darkness in Egypt. Sobrang dilim po. Maalala ko, nung pumutok po yung pinatubo, there was a total darkness na yung lampara or yung gasera, pag sinindihan mo, the light will not spread out. Kung saan lang yung, kung saan lang yung lights niya, doon lang yung, yung siga ng lights niya, doon lang ang sinag. Hindi po siya nag spread out. So, parang naiimagine ko na during that night in Egypt ay napakadilim. And God wants to address this to their God na si Ra, yung God of the sun. Imagine three days. For three days, sinihintay ng mga Egyptians na kikilos yung kanilang Diyos na si Ra para bigyan sila ng liwanag. But, they, but Ra, the God of the sun, failed the Egyptians. Wala pong liwanag sa Egypt sa loob ng tatlong araw. But then, doon sa Goshen, where the Israelites live, ay napaka liwanag. So, andito yung mga Israelites, may kapayapaan sila na doon sa other parts ng Egypt, nagkakagulo po sila. Makikita po natin dito ang difference na kapag ikaw ay marunong sumunod sa Panginoon, you will be blessed by God. Pero kapag ikaw ayaw mong maliwala, ayaw mong sumunod sa Diyos, hindi ka lang padadalhan ng salot, kundi talagang mahihirapan ka dahil hindi ka kayang tulungan ng mga Diyos-Diyosan na inaakala mong may kapangyarihan. Amen? Ra is just an idol. He is powerless and no match to the God of Israel, to the one true God and the God of light. Christians are different to the unbelievers. We are unique. Bakit po? Because there is light in us. The light of Jesus shine in us. We are covered and saved. By the blood of Jesus. Yes, there is plague. There is coronavirus. But being a child of God, we have that peace in our hearts. Hindi po tayo matatakot, hindi tayo magpapanik, hindi tayo magwuhori. Dahil alam po natin na kasama natin ang Diyos. When we obey God, His words, His instructions... There is protection, there is peace, and number three. Last, what will happen when we obey God's instructions? When we obey God's instructions, there is new perspective. God is shaking us to shape us. He is changing us from inside that we will come out with a new perspective to start a new beginning. He wants to bring out the best in us. In Exodus 12, chapter 41 through 42, At the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. 
It was a night of watching by the Lord to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So this same night is a night of watching kept to the Lord by all the people of Israel throughout their generations. God is watching us. He knows the very detail of our lives. This pandemic COVID-19 locked down the whole world and we were quarantined inside our homes for a greater purpose. There is a purpose kung bakit ito inalaw ng Panginoon na mangyari. I believe this is a divine setup by God. This is a wake-up call. Let us use this time to re-evaluate our priorities to see where we are attached. God is shaking us to detach us from the things that make us unproductive, from the things of this world na naglalayo at sumisira ng relasyon natin sa ating Diyos. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The world is being shaken. We are being shaken. This is a wake-up call. Kaya huwag kang maging tulog mantika. Huwag kang magtulog-tulugan. Baka sa susunod na pagyanig ay hindi mo makayanan. Remember Jonah? He ran away from God to do the mission. So hinayaan pa niyang makwarantine siya inside the belly of a great fish. Kung sumunod na lang sana siya, Eh di sana, hindi na po siya makakaranas ng quarantine for three days inside the belly of the great fish. Kaya, kung ginigising ka ng Panginoon, kailangan take heed of the word of God. Sumunod ka sa pinag-uutos ng Panginoon. Do the will of God. Amen? So this is just like a week. Uh, yung pag, pag gusto mong gisingin ng baby. So, when you when you wake up a baby, it will just start with a tender or with a gentle shake. Pero kapag mahirap gisingin, kailangan mong lakasan yung pag-shake sa kanya. So, ganun din tayo. Kapag hindi po tayo nasi-shaken, hindi po tayo uh, nagigising sa nais ng Panginoon na tayo ay magising at maintindihan at gawin yung kanyang purpose o ang kanyang ang kanyang mga pinagagawa sa atin eh we will experience stronger shakening wag mo na wag na po nating hintayin yung mas malakas na pagyanig o wag na nating hintayin yung pagdating ng mas matinding salot kailangan gumising na po tayo kumilos na po tayo Tumayo na po tayo and prepare ourselves for a better and great harvest. The harvest is ready. Kaya dapat tayo maging ready na rin po tayo. And we have to be sure that we will come out not the same as we were before. Huwag kang lalabas na di ka na bago. Let us come out with new perspective to start a new beginning. Let us come out a better person. Let us come out stronger and bolder. Let us come out more intentional, more active in doing the things of God. Let us come out a new creation. Sabihin mo nga sa sarili mo, I am a new creation. Or type it down, sabihin mo, I am a new creation. Yes, there is plague, but there is protection. There is peace. There is new perspective. Just trust Him, obey Him, and make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Amen? Let's watch this. Many ask, why is God allowing all of this to happen? 
The truth is, everything that's been happening in the four corners of the earth was already prophesied in the Bible. This is the inevitable fulfillment of Scripture. These are the signs that precede the return of the Lord Jesus. God has always allowed humanity to go through difficult times. But the question is, why? We need to remember that when everything is going well, when the wind is at our back, our tendency is to relax and rely on our own strength. Many imagine that they are self-sufficient. They forget about God and even deride Him. But moments like these show us that we are nothing. In the blink of an eye, an invisible enemy can appear to take the lives of thousands with no regard for social class, race, or status. Where are the powerful ones now? Their money and power can do nothing to stop this virus from spreading. In times like this, we see just how fragile and insignificant we really are. Only in times like these do we stop to reflect and bow before the one true God. It's only in the storms of life, in the toughest of times, when people humble themselves before the Most High and seek His help. The writer of Psalms says, My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Going through deserts teaches us much more than the comfort of green pastures. How many people have given up on praying but have now started to pray again? How many have been spiritually lazy but are now being shaken awake to restore the relationship with God? How many had drifted away but have come back to God in this crisis? God doesn't always change our situation, but He uses the situation to change us. God is using this time to test the faith of those who serve Him. Many are discovering that they spent their entire lives building their houses on the sand. Now that supernatural faith is needed, they've collapsed after years of not practicing what they were taught. One thing is certain. Whoever builds their lives on the rock will go through storms, yet remain unshaken. Storms come to everyone, but only those who hear and practice the word remain. God won't keep us from being thrown into a lion's den, but he'll close the mouths of the lions. God won't keep us from being thrown into a fiery furnace, but he'll ensure that not even a single hair of our head is burned. Let's have this faith as we go through these times, and in the end, we'll come out stronger. Hallelujah. Friends, stay home, stay safe, but don't stay the same. After this plague, after this crisis, we will come out bringing the best in us for the glory of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we believe and we declare that you are the great I am, the almighty God, the most holy one who created the heavens and the earth and everything in it. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness and we bow down to your majesty and we acknowledge your sovereignty. Thank you that you are just a prayer away and you hear us when, whenever we call and cry out to you. Father God, examine our hearts today and cleanse us by the blood of the Lamb. Purify us, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation and help us, O God, to obey and trust you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. And thank you for your power and for your great love. Bless every viewer right now. Seal them with the blood of Jesus, that no plague befall them. Give them the divine protection and the peace of Jesus that surpasses all understanding, that guards their hearts and minds. Give them a new perspective to start a new beginning. Thank you, God. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone and see you again.